The KSO Show returns. I'm Derek Young, joined by Grand Flanders. Position previews, probably going to be hustling these out a little bit as we're actually approaching the season a little bit faster than we anticipated, I guess. Every day goes by, but we've had so many other KSO shows and videos to produce as well that we're probably a little bit behind. I think, we're, But I think we're halfway through them, so maybe we're just on time as well. For, for this particular, particular one, Flando, I think it's time for a little bit more offense. Yes. How about, how about some wide receivers? Probably your favorite position to discuss. Probably not our favorite position personnel-wise. They've been a work in progress since Chris Kleiman arrived in Manhattan. Hasn't been the best position. I think we all can agree, those listening, myself, you, that they'll probably still go as Malik Knowles goes. Yeah, I mean, Malik Knowles, I think really is that guy that will be the deciding factor on this season of how successful these wide receivers can be you know all season or all his whole career he's been up and down um injuries have taken him out um and sometimes you know he's tried to play through injuries and you know he disappears in games when he tries to do that when he's a healthy player though he's very exciting to watch he's dynamic he's fast he can catch the ball he's done a lot of things and he has a really good connection with Skylar Thompson. I don't think that should be understated either. They have uh, shown that they can do things together on the football field in the past um, with exciting plays downfield. Um, so he's going to be the, the most exciting you know, down play receiver this team should have. They have some other guys that we're about to get to. But Malik Knowles is the guy that is going to probably have to have the best season out of those wide receiver group out of that wide receiver group for me to think this team can reach its fullest potential. And that's going to be a really key for him to stay healthy, stay on the field, and uh, just continue, you know, a really good season with his quarterback in his final year. Yeah, he's by far the most skilled and talented of the bunch, of course, and so far so good. He didn't miss a spring football practice, hasn't missed a fall camp practice, was healthy throughout the summer. So this is the longest he's gone throughout his career at 100% health. Uh, knock on all the wood you can because you know that that can change in an instant of course when it when it comes to him uh the rest of the receiver group uh i think typically we always hear there it's a work in progress and that's exactly what courtney messingham said uh earlier in fall camp too i asked him you know how much are you going to rely on tyrone howell the junior college edition from hutchinson community college and he said, well, you know, it's a, it's a work in progress. Obviously, he's flashed. You know, everyone says he's starting to stand out a little bit, and he's someone that will play a little bit. And I asked if it was dependent upon, you know, Shabaston Taylor's health, because that's another question, not just the health of Malik Knowles, even though he hasn't gotten hurt, but the health of Shabaston Taylor, because he was he, he, he hasn't had any setbacks, but, of course, he was injured in the final game of the year last season when against Texas, and he's – just now fully cleared so it's probably undetermined at this point you know even though he's fully cleared from a health standpoint if if he is there mentally because you have to come back mentally from these types of injuries yeah. as well to be able to provide an impact uh, as soon as the the season over in Arlington this was an interesting quote from I think it was uh I think it was Messingham or maybe it was maybe it was uh Jason Ray well I mean one of those two I believe talked about Malik Knowles and, you know, his mindset this year. And it sounds like things could be coming along. Um, you just never know till you see it with him because that's the thing is I'm not going to be convinced with Malik Knowles being there every single game until I see it, whether it's mentally or physically um, from, from an injury standpoint or just he's in his own head. Regardless, though, this year seems to be like when he's coming into his own. Coaches seem to have more confidence in him. He's not a leader in the locker room, but it sounds like he has one of the – one of the coaches, those, one of those two coaches I mentioned said that he has the most confidence in the room. So he might not be the leader and the you know, talker in bringing guys along, but if he is confident and he's finding himself, I think that's a different Malik Knowles than maybe we've seen in the past. A guy that may be more timid, maybe not around his teammates and stuff, but I think this could be a Malik Knowles that comes out of his shell and the team surely would need it. Yeah, well... They're going to need it from Knowles, but they'll definitely need it from others as well. Tyrone Hell might provide an impact, as we just uh, alluded to not, not long ago in this particular podcast. You hope Shabaston Taylor is able to come back at some point. Um, will he be ready for the season opener? That's probably to be determined because he just mentally, physically is there. Mentally, he might not be. It's still a work in progress. 
and might be ambitious to think that he's going to be heavily utilized against Stanford yeah. in, in the season opener in, in Arlington. Landry Weber and Cape Warner probably are what they are. And if that's true, then you're going to need a Tyrone Howe, a Keenan Garber, a Phillip Brooks, and maybe a Jalen Travis to supplement what Malik Knowles can do, especially early on in the year if Shabazz and Taylor is unable to go. That final edition of Tyrone Howell was a very important one um, because, yes, he's going to have to play right away. And by all accounts, it sounds like he's, he's going to be that guy. The coaches really like what they're seeing from him in practice. The word strong hands has been used over and over over with him. Um, and, I mean, Kleiman did mention that he can create separation too. We'll see if that's really true against, you know, this uh, the, the Big 12 defenses that he's going to be lining up against. But the fact is he can catch the ball even if he's covered, it seems, because he has hands that are really strong. We saw that from a guy like Chabaston Taylor. I think he's a similar uh, kind of pass, ca- uh, you know, receiver that can catch the ball in traffic uh, and – Javaston also uses his great size to do that as well, but doesn't really have the speed, but they have other guys they can go to, like a Phillip Brooks that has some speed, Malik Knowles, obviously. And then um, that's what's going to be the question, is what are some of these young guys going to do? Because Keenan Garber is a guy with speed that might be able to step up and had some you know, some buzz earlier in the offseason. Jalen Travis also had some buzz. RJ Garcia has been talked about recently in fall camp. He's uh, an exciting, you know, incoming freshman that should be able to, I think, you know, see the field spit possibly sparingly this season. And if he's good enough, maybe more. But that just remains to be seen. I think, you know, he's got a lot more to get comfortable with. Garber and Jalen Travis are a whole year further along in the program, so I wouldn't be surprised to see them further along in the depth chart. But regardless, some of those guys in the back end are going to have to step up Um, whether it be because of injury or just because you need multiple wide receivers making plays. Yeah, Courtney Messiam says they'll play seven wideouts, if I have to imagine. Malik Knowles will be one of those, of course. Phillip Brooks, that gives you two. Jalen Travis and Keenan Garber, three, four. Tyron Howell, five. Landry Weber, six. You didn't say Taylor yet, but... Yeah, and then then there's there's Cade Warner, too, which Mm -hmm. then you're approaching seven or eight if you count in Shabazz and Taylor. So... Despite the, the the recent chatter about R.J. Garcia, I, I certainly yep. doubt we, we see much of him. We might not see much of Jalen Travis. We might not see much of Landry Weber. might not see much of Cade Warner. We'll see as when you get further down in seven or eight, then you're probably talking about just a few snaps here and there. Um, that That's the wide receiver position. I'd be remiss to say if, how much this position is impacted by Malik Knowles, of course. But let's remember... You know, the return of Skylar Thompson should help this group out a little bit yep. as well. And, and we probably didn't touch on that enough. But obviously, Skylar, or even if it was Will Howard this year, just an improved quarterback from yep. the Will Howard we saw last year would make a large difference. That's the wide receivers. We still have one more group that can catch the ball as well in the tight ends and fullbacks, particularly the tight ends, of course, with Daniel Lee Matter Bay Bay being an impact transfer. And that'll be up next on the KSO Show. For Grant Flanders, I'm Derek Young. Always tell your friends.